Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the image to the beast claiming horizontal immunity, the willful declaration of Satan's indwelt presence. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. The image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist indiscriminately today, currently upon the children of God and the children of man. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10. And the third angel followed them, saying with loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God, which is poured out with it without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Both directly, Romans 3, 13, their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit, and the poison of apse is under their lips. And passively, as declared in the parable of the wheat and the tares, Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 30. The image of the beast is a singular unit in the pluralistic manifestation of the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And the image of the beast is a civil power as manifested in Revelation chapter 17, verses 12. The beast is the indwelt plurality of the image to the beast and is the fullness of Satan's presence, purpose, and power revealed to all flesh. Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. The beast and his image is one mind, one voice, and one singular vision with the dragon. Revelation chapter 17, verse 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. We know that the dragon summons the beast as manifested in Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. The beast and the beast in turn summons his image, which is the manifest presence of the seal of Satan occupied within the soul of man with the mark of the beast. The image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, 1 John 2, 15 through 18. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, an Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So the image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life, upon the children of God and the children of man, soliciting the worship of death, revelation Revelation chapter 13, 15, and he had power to give life unto, unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship, the image to the beast should be killed. And in doing so, we know the image of the beast is placing a bounty upon the heads of all flesh by its claims of a capitalistic Exchange 1 Timothy 6 10 for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they had erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows, with many sorrows. So we know that the image of the beast, it's, it's this is what it's doing as it's pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, it's actually placing a bounty. It's putting a bounty on the on the heads of the children of God and the children of man for the destruction of all flesh in its presence, while simultaneously the image of the beast falsely cl is claiming horizontal immunity by claiming the perpetrators that are passively pouring out the spirit of Antichrist are committing such crimes in the sight of the beast solely motivated by expectation of a pending monetary reward. Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30. Words, workings, and facts directly repudiated by Holy Father God in Matthew, excuse me, Revelation chapter 18 verses 1 through 5 where God declares the habitation of all of of the demons of hell arrayed upon all the flesh of men. And he pleads with, with the body of Christ to come out of Babylon. And finally, he declares that their claims of horizontal immunity are false and vertical condemnation is residing upon everybody that is it, that is incorporated into the image of the beast and its power and serving the image to the beast. 
occurs in verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. That's Revelation chapter 18, verse 5. So the very essence of these claims. So the image of the beast is claiming, while it's pouring out, it's it's soliciting the ser servants, it, people in satanic service to pour out iniquity, transgression, and sin indiscriminately on the population. It's claiming horizontal immunity because it's claiming people are actually uh, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist and tormenting people in their flesh by their own volition. They're doing it because they think that they're going to get money in exchange from the image to the beast in doing so. So the, the image of the beast by this is claiming that it's it's horizontally immune. It's even though it incited this, it instructed it instructed people to pour out it, it it solicited it instructed people how to pour out the spirit of antichrist and it bought, brought people the materials and instruction how to use the materials to pour out the spirit of antichrist it's still claiming horizontal immunity because it's claiming the perpetrators that are actually tormenting the population's flesh are doing it because they're 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 planning on getting a monetary reward for for their crimes. So it's claiming horizontal immunity. We know it's claiming horizontal immunity. It's claiming its conscience is clear. It hasn't committed any crimes because all these people are trying to destroy their neighbors and their neighbors' children's flesh because they think they're going to get money for doing so. So the very essence of these claims by the image of the beast to be horizontally immune for iniquity, transgression, and sin is an affirmative declaration of the spiritual manifestation of the very seal of Satan, the mark of the beast, Romans chapter 7, verses 12 through 14. Wherefore the law is holy, the commandment holy, just, and good, was then that which is good made death unto me. God forbid sin that it might appear sin, working death in me. It's the appearance of sin working death within the image of the beast manifesting people in satanic captivity and six souls everywhere it goes so these fraudulent claims of fallible men to this these are fraudulent claims by fallible men to Im immortality apart from the presence of god one one timothy chapter 6 verses 15 through 16 to claim you're immune for iniquity transgression and sin is a form of claiming you're you're immortal because we know that that man is mortal all men are mortal and they're subject to death because they sin so apart this is this is a it's a fraudulent claim this claim of immunity while it's pouring out the spirit of antichrist upon the population by the image of the beast and rendering people into satanic service is a fraudulent claim by the image to the beast to immortality apart from the presence of holy father god 1 timothy 6 15 and 16 and in doing so the image of the beast is claiming divine authorization for the forgiveness of sins and the imputation of sins upon the creature luke chapter 5 verse 17 through 26 john chapter 10 verses 22 through 42 it's claiming in doing so it's claiming it's immune for iniquity transgression and sin and it's claiming divine authorization to forgive sins uh, upon its own self and upon the people that it's rendering, s s it's 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 getting to serve it in its criminal capacity, and it's claiming dominion over the creature by sins in the same in the same instance it's actually isaiah chapter 54 16 and roman chapter 6 verses 12 through 14 makes it very clear the image of the beast it's not only claiming it's immune to sin and it's horizontally immune for iniquity transgression and sin and it can impart this immunity in a temporal nature upon the creature that serves this it's claiming dominion by sin it's doing both at the same time it's as it watches the creature serve it by pouring out the spirit of antichrist and destruction upon the citizens of the united states of america so these are labors for horizontal immunity denying vertical accountability to god and is the very essence of the mark of the beast appearing in revelation chapter 17 verse 5 and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth these people have no idea what's happening to them spiritually while they serve the image of the beast. They're in total darkness. They don't know. They don't know whether the image of the beast is going to show up one day and pay them some money or throw them in jail 
<laughs> they don't know. They don't know anything. They just, they just, they're flying along. They say, wow, it's New Deal. The New Deal. Let's pour out destruction on my neighbors and their children. And everything's going to be good. So this is, this is a manifestation, a manifestation of Babylonian captivity. Another manifestation of it. A, a part, the majority of that is not cognizance of God's goodness and presence and coming to the consciousness that you're sinning and your sins are the abode of death in your works and your life. So this is the soul of man no longer cognizant of God's indwelt presence. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meet your temperance against us. There is no law. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, which states, and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more knowledge and in all judgment and that ye may approve things that are excellent and that ye may be sincere without offense until the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ under the glory and praise of God. We know the image of the beast is 100% spiritually bankrupt. It does not produce any jewels of godly wisdom. It's incapable of doing that. It's pouring out destruction indiscriminately upon the children of God and the children of man. And in doing so, it's 100% incapable to produce and to break bread and to bring forth God, unique godly wisdom in the kingdom of God and in God's presence. The only thing it has is it can carry around with it a bunch of Bible studies and, and a bunch of notes and try to go and fool people that it has the judgments and the glory of God residing within it, but nothing could be farther from the truth. We know that every single jewel that the image of the beast has is stolen. It's the thief that comes that, to, to create false apostate Christianity and to kill the, the, the souls of those that reside within the body of Christ as they exchange the glory of Jesus Christ for the glory of the image of the beast and its constitutional and its government as manifest in its constitution and government as manifest in Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 17. So we know the image, it doesn't break any bread. The only judgments that it has are what has already been revealed and given to men made righteous by God. It's a 100% fraud. It's laboring for nothing but sexual and monetary control, as, as it appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. And it's soliciting the destruction of the children of God and the children of man today. So it can gain civil and ecclesiastical power to subdue the creature on pain of death to fulfill its own lusts. And it has no cognizance whatsoever of what God's going to do to it. Because if it did, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be soliciting. If it knew what was going to happen to it, it wouldn't be soliciting. The judgment was going to fall on it. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And this is God rendering judgment. This is they don't know. They're in Babylon. They don't, they're totally. You know, they think that they're righteous. Then, well, they're doing what they're doing. So, and that's a part of their union with false apostate Christianity, is that they're righteously subduing everybody, and that they're going to execute righteousness all, upon all criminal liability to make themselves right before God, and while they fulfill their own lust. So that's this. We know this is nothing can be further from the truth. That total condemnation resides within the image of the beast. It has the mark of the beast, and it is violating the children of God and the children of man today. And there's going to come judgments falling now it's falling now on the populations because of of the image of the beast listing people in service to pour out the spirit of antichrist upon our world so this is the very manifestation of horizontal immunity for the beast and its image the very manifestation of the claim of horizontal immunity for the beast and his image is the very manifestation of spiritual obfuscation, a vertical cognizance of guilt for iniquity, transgression, and sin. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20 through 22. And Psalm chapter 51, verse 1 through 4. And this occurs before the face of Holy Father God. And this is just a, it's, it's a manifestation of the fact, it's a clear signal that they're totally condemned. Revelation 20, 11, And I saw a great white throne to him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. We know they're not cognizant that they're going to be judged and they're going to be punished, because if they were, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. Right? So they're, they're in Babylon. They have no idea. And the, the people that serve them don't know. They don't know if one day they're going to show up and pay them, or one day they're going to show up and they're going to they're punish them. They don't know. So... 
This is solicitation of the destruction of the children of God and the children of men incorporated in its highest operational capacity into the United States Constitution where the image of the beast appears as the, the, the solicitor of the worship of death. It pours out the spirit of death and it calls all flesh to worship it as it creates a civil and ecclesiastical union on pain of death. Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 17. This is the very seat of all flesh taking its permanent place in the kingdom of hell. Ezekiel 28 chapter 1 verse 1 through 5. Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 through 9 and 12. Thus Holy Father God declares in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6 through 8. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Be not cut off in her iniquity. God is declaring vertical condemnation on Babylon and everybody that's residing in it that thinks that they've gotten away with what they're doing and pouring out the spirit of Antichrist upon all flesh. So by these facts we know of a certainty that the image of the beast is currently accumulating credit in heaven within their personal spiritual accounts for the, the sins and causality, the premature destruction of the children of God and the children of man by the thousands. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 through 21 makes this absolutely crystal clear. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth, doth corrupt and where neither thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is there will your heart be also. And we know the image of the beast. They, it sold its soul to Satan the motive it sold its soul to Satan for was for sexual and monetary control over the population as depicted in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6. So the image of the beast is stealing souls by captivating the creature in subservience to illicit works. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 through 15. Matthew chapter 24 verses 10 through 12. Matthew chapter 10 verse 21. And Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 and 17. This is, this is the image of the beast selling its soul to Satan and rendering the creature in service to elicit works, the willful exchange of death of life for death by modern man. That appears in Romans chapter 1, verse 20 through 23, where the creature change, exchanges the worship of the, the, the creator for the creature, for the image of the beast, and 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. So thus, the image of the beast is soliciting currently in the indiscriminate destruction of all flesh as provisional administrators to pay everybody's death's wages. 1 John chapter 3, verses 4, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Romans chapter 3, verses 19 and 20 and 23, Whosoever committed sin, wait, 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 wait. 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And of course, finally, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. So, the image of the beast claiming, it's claiming it's horizontally immune. And it's claiming, this claim is first and foremost, it's an affront to Holy Father God. And then secondly, it's a violation of, of the civil statutes of man and the very nature of God residing within the creature as the image of the beast poisons the creature with the spirit of Antichrist by pouring out the desire for a sexual and or mon or for a monetary exchange to render service to the image of the beast as pouring out destruction upon its neighbor and its neighbor's children. So this is the captivity of the creature by the image to the beast to captivate the creature and to steal the creature's soul eventually on pain of death when the full manifestation of the Constitution of Satan, if it comes to pass and it's incorporated in the United States Constitution, this will give the image of the beast absolute power to kill souls with the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 17. So in conclusion, by these facts we know that the image of the beast is claiming not only horizontal immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin, it is also sim simultaneously falsely 
falsely claiming divine authorization to impute sins upon the creature indiscriminately and discriminately by the destruction of all flesh and to obtain its own sexual and monetary control of the United States population. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, where the final seed of all lost souls appears in the kingdom of heaven, excuse me, in the kingdom of hell and death and a graduating scale in the presence of God in the kingdom of heaven. The righteous are witnessing this as manifested by Jeremiah chapter 4 verses 23 through 31. And this is the very causality of the total evacuation of the spirit of grace within all flesh. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8 and Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13 where we have the parable of the ten virgins which on the wedding night the, the virgins realize that their lamps have gone out. They're no longer anointed with the Holy Spirit right before the second advent. And they're told to go and buy because they have already sold their soul. They sold their, they exchanged their soul to Satan through the image of the beast and his glory. They exchanged the glory of Jesus Christ for that of the image of the beast. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 11 through 13. And they sold their souls for a religious tax and they created a civil and ecclesiastical union while the image of the beast was killing souls both spiritually and killing human beings to uphold its sexual and monetary desires up over all flesh and to reap this harvest in democracy and in the presence of God as democracy, democratic process and constitutional protections were, were manifest in full in the presence of God. Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. So without the, the full manifestation of God's presence, the Constitution and constitutional protections are not operational. And we know that in the presence of the image of the beast, there are no constitutional protections. If it incorporates Revelation 13, 15 through 17 in the United States Constitution, there's no more fullness in God's presence of 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 democracy, democratic process, and constitutional protections. There's only service unto death on pain of death. Right, and that's why it is it is now indiscriminately soliciting the destruction of all flesh, so it can fulfill its own sexual and monetary desires, as the seat of Satan is revealed in its heart in Revelation chapter seventeen, verse three and four. So, Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments, and remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace, as manifested by Matthew chapter thirteen, verses ten through fifteen. Thank you.